Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio, Mystery, Suspense, Dramas, and Horrors, where we bring to you the most mysterious tales that the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 116 episodes made, broadcasting from 1949 to 1953, we bring to you Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Diamond Detective Agency. Roses are red, violets are blue. Crime doesn't pay, but see that you do. Oh, Rick. Oh, hi, Helen, baby. Rick, have you ever thought of writing holiday greeting cards? Mm, no. But then you might just have a thought there. Christmas isn't far away. Mm, I think you'd better aim toward April Fool's Day. Oh, sweet. Helen, did you call just to insult my creative genius, or do I get an invitation to dinner? Well, the genius I didn't even recognize. The dinner, well... Oh, maybe. Hmm. Here I am, a poor, starving detective, and you confront me with maybe. Oh, well, a girl can't be too careful about who she invites into her house these days. Do you have references? From the best crooks in town. Oh, well, I suppose it's all right. Come around to the back door, and I'll have Francis fix you a sandwich. Well, now, don't go to all that bother, Helen. I'll... I'll just stop off at the mission. <laughs> oh, you fool. Are you busy? Mm-mm. Haven't had a case since... It... Well. What is it? Well, I'm not sure, but I think a flying saucer landed outside and its occupant just walked in. Rick, what are you talking about? Who came in? Well, it looks like an Otis Love Loon, but it's awake. Oh, Diamond. Mm, got a vocabulary like Otis, too. Look, Shamus, hurry up, will you? I got business with you. Helen, I have no choice but to hang up. This man speaks with such authority. Oh, Rick. If Otis is there, go easy on him. You'll tease that poor boy out of his mind. Helen, he... Oh, no, it's too obvious I won't say it. I'll see you at dinner. Bye. Well, well, well. Sergeant Otis Loveloon. What brings you up here? Want me to sign your report card? The lieutenant sent me up, wise guy. Oh? Now, let's see where they put that paper. Paper? Oh, oh, here. Uh, Mr. Richard Diamond, we of the 5th Precinct, having missed your sparkling personality, do hereby invite you to a tea to be held this pum. This what? This pum. That's what it says. Let me see that paper. Otis, that's P.M. Well, don't that smell... No. What is all this? A tea at the 5th Precinct? Sure. It's my idea. The lieutenant says we got to be more formal from now on. And he wants to see you. So? So this is your idea of being formal. That's right. Trouble with you, Diamond, is you got no culture. Well, I'm hurt, Otis. You say Walt wants to see me? Yeah, he sent me in a squad car for you. Well, I can hardly wait to find out what this is all about. Me too. I delivered a letter to him this morning. He's been a changed man ever since. A letter? Hmm. Maybe he... Oh, no, no, no. Walt's too old for the draft. And so yours truly was ushered into a waiting squad car. Usually, Walt Levinson let me wear out shoe leather on my trips to the 5th Precinct, and his hospitality was overwhelming. Otis even stopped on the way and bought me some chewing gum. Of course, it was Otis's favorite brand, but then I'm no prude. I enjoy blowing bubbles. He's in here, Diamond. Take off your hat. What? New rule. Oh, no. Here he is, Lieutenant. Well, I got eyes, you numbs. Thank you, Sergeant Otis. Oh, thank you, Lieutenant. It was a pleasure. You may take your leave now, Sergeant Otis. Yes, sir, Lieutenant Levinson. Otis, curtsy and get out of here, will you? This is killing me. Oh, you had to go and ruin it all. Walt, what's going on down here? Look at your desk. What's wrong with my desk? Well, it's tidy. Everything's in place. Are you ill? Mr. Diamond, a man's desk reflects his character. Now, please be seated. I think I'd better take this standing. This new trend in character is amazing. Rick, look at this. 
Looks like an ordinary letter to me. Yes, but what's in it? Well, you tell me what's in it. Rick, I've been invited to speak at the annual Peace Officers Symposium at the University of North Carolina. So? So? But don't you know what this means? The top men from all over the country will be there. And to be a speaker, well, that's quite an honor. Oh, comes the dawn. So this is why everything around here has become formal, huh? Sure. After all, we've got to have a little dignity. Mm hmm. Why send for me? In a squad car yet? Well, it's like this, Rick. I'm supposed to make a speech concerning juvenile delinquency in New York. Uh huh. Now, they also want someone to make a speech on the relationship between the policeman and the private detective. Touching. They told me to pick out a good man and bring him down. So I picked you. Oh, Walt, you're so thoughtful. Sorry, but speeches aren't my line. Ah, oh, Rick, don't be that way. We'll have a good time. We leave tonight from Penn Station, get there in the morning. It'd be a nice vacation. Walt, I can't afford a nice vacation. While I'm down there over the weekend, I might miss a client. I'll get somebody else. Uh, Rick. Well? Remember last year when we decided to give all the private detectives an examination to find out whether or not they were still qualified to operate? Sure, why? Well, I just heard the commission may call another examination this year. So what's this got to do with me going to North Carolina? Well, last year, remember, I didn't exactly help you just to cough here and there when I saw you were writing the wrong answer. Go on. I was just thinking, maybe this year I won't have a cold. Oh, now, Walt. Rick, this trip to North Carolina means a lot to me. All kidding aside, it's a big honor. Now, be a pal and go along. Oh, well, what? Oh, that's a boy. I'll have the ticket clerk line up two tickets. All right, Walt, I'll agree on one condition. Shoot. Well, I realize you're now a man of dignity, and I know that... That you think things should be more formal? Yeah. But for Pete's sake, take that doily off the lie detector. Oh. That's a nice, healthy groan. What's the matter, Walt? Train rides make you ill or something? No, but I just had a horrible thought. I was so excited about leaving, I forgot. Otis will be in charge while I'm gone. Oh, great. This is the biggest boon to crime since Prohibition. Don't remind me of it. No, I'll take your mind off of it. Look at the more pleasant things in life. Mmm. Like that blonde up front? <laughs> oh, you're catching on, Fatty. Cute, isn't she? I guess so. Only she keeps looking around. Sort of suspicious-like. Well, can't you take your mind off crime once in a while? All right. I'm sorry I brought it up. Everyone isn't criminal, you know. She's probably a co-ed on her way back to school. That's your opinion. Me? I say she's got criminal connections. Well, I have a buck that says you're wrong. All right, you're on. Now, how do we find out? Walt, you're so naive. Look, she's going to the club car. Come on. Now, where'd she go? Now, there she is at the end of the car. Come on. Hey, Rick, maybe we shouldn't. Uh, she might have a boyfriend around somewhere. Oh, it's all right, Walt. I have you to protect me. Uh, <clears throat> uh, pardon me, uh, Miss... Uh, yes? Uh, I'm Richard Diamond, and this is Walt Levinson. Walt says he'd like very much to meet you, but he's the shy type and asked me to mild standish for him. Diamond. Well, you Americans, you are certainly direct in making the acquaintance of young women. But I cannot remember anyone who has done it in so few words. Well, we're really harmless, and we would like to buy you a drink. Why, I think that would be very nice. Good. Let's order before Diamond proposes for me. Oh, the waiter seems to be busy at the other end of the car. Well, I'll go down there and get the drinks. Excuse me. Are, uh, are you traveling far, Miss, uh... Crona? Isabel Crona. Hmm. I'm on my way to North Carolina. Oh, well, how nice. So are we. Do you uh, live in New York? No, I'm from Switzerland. Oh, then you're a long way from home. Yes, but I love traveling in your country. Everything is so beautiful. This is my first trip, but I hope to return. Pleasure trip or a business? Oh, uh, a little of both. I'm representing my country's police department at the North Carolina Symposium. Oh, perhaps I should explain that. You see... Uh, they are holding a convention... Oh, uh, of... never mind, we know. That's where we're headed for, too. Well, such a coincidence. You're a police officer? Uh, yes, that's right. Walt's a lieutenant, and I'm in business for myself. Well, we here ha we are. Hope Scotch is all right. Fine. Thank you. Here, Diamond. Pardon my thumb. Mm -hmm. 
scotch, and fingerprint ink. What a combination. Mr. Diamond tells me that you are a policeman, Mr. Levinson. Yes, but don't let that frighten you. It's a tough life, but off-duty, we're just like everyone else. Well, I remember... Walt, uh, Walt, before you start telling her all about crime, let me tell you something. She happens to be a policewoman. What? Well, I'll be. You certainly will. A flat foot in high heels. Well, sometimes it is advantageous, Lieutenant. If I were easily recognized as a policewoman, well, my usefulness would be at an end. Well, I, um... I wouldn't exactly say Uh, that. uh, Let's have another. By the time our train reached Raleigh, North Carolina, we were old friends. From Raleigh, we took a bus to Chapel Hill, where the university was located. As we got off the bus, a short, red-faced man came up to greet us. Hello there. How, how do you... Hello, my name is Kevin. Christopher Kevin. I take it you folks are here for the Peace Officer Symposium. That's right. I'm Levinson from New York. This is Ms. Isabel Crona, and this is Richard uh, Dunn. Yeah, I'm very glad how to... Do? How are you? How do you do? I, I am the chairman of the Institute. Uh, we're taking a group picture on the front steps, and I think you're about the last to arrive. We can get started with the picture now. Ah, oh, this is a police convention, all right. Here are two minutes, and lawyer Phil Potts wants to mug you. <laughs> there. Move in closer, please. Well, that's one suggestion I don't mind. Bother you, dear? Well, uh, since it's all for art, I do not think yeah. I mind. That's it. That's it. Now, we just... Oh, my. You in the front row, you moved again. Now, you've got... Our little friend is having a rough time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He was... Uh, What's the matter? That man. The, the photographer. What about him? He... All right. Oh, now. it is nothing. All it just right. looks so familiar. Easy now, don't strain, don't easy. Oh, no! The third row! Will you please stand still? The little photographer pulled out a few hairs from his head and patiently rearranged his subjects. Half an hour later, he had succeeded in snapping enough pictures and the group disbanded. Miss Croner promised to have dinner with us that evening. So, a couple of hours later, Walt and I were walking down the hall to her room. Playing like gentlemen, we knocked on a door that was half ajar. No answer. Still the gentleman, we knocked again. This is getting monotonous, so we quit being gentlemen. We shouldn't walk right in, Rick. Oh, come on. Maybe she forgot. After all, I... Uh-oh. What? She didn't forget, Walt. Look. Good Lord. Better get on the phone and call the local peace officer. We have no jurisdiction here. Not even for murder. <laughs> Walt and I stared down at Isabel Croner's body on the floor. What had once been a pretty head was now crushed and wasn't a very pleasant sight. Walt called the local sheriff, and we waited until he arrived. Well, you say you two found the body? That's right, Sheriff. My name's Diamond. This is Walt Levinson. We're here for the peace officer's symposium. Oh, oh, yeah. And uh, who was she? Name was Croner, Isabel. She was a policewoman from Switzerland. Well, the coroner will be finished in a few minutes. Darndest thing I ever heard of. A policewoman gets killed right smack in the middle of a gathering of the best cops in the country. Now, we called you right away. We figured if the news leaked out, every cop in the place would try and catch the murderer. They'd all run into each other and make a real mess. Yeah, but we'd better keep it quiet till we can make an investigation. You all seem to know some of the facts about her. Care to give me a hand? Sure would, Sheriff. Mr. Diamond here is a private detective, though. There's no client, Rick. Do you want to work on it? Well, that's a nasty poke, Walt. I'm as anxious as you are to catch this girl's killer. Good. Now, any reason you know of why anyone would want to get rid of her? I can't think of any. She said this was her first trip to this country. Uh, uh, Johnson, check with the hotel manager. See if he saw anyone come in who might have entered this room. Now, let's see. Looks like she was hit with a heavy instrument. Yeah. We noticed what might be a clue over here, Sheriff. There, on the floor. Oh, a little vial. We figured it might have fallen from the killer's pocket during the struggle. It's, uh, it's marked silver nitrate. There might be some prints on the bottle. Well, let's hope there are. We can use a few breaks in this case. What do you think about Simmons? Oh, he seems like a competent sheriff. He wants us over at his office after we have dinner. Yeah, he's sending the vial on to the lab in Raleigh. I hope they turn up something. 
What beats me is, why was Isabel Crona killed? Who did she know here? Walt, I... I... Hmm. What's the matter, Rick? I was just thinking. Remember when we had our picture taken earlier today? Sure, why? That little photographer. Isabel seemed to recognize him. She shrugged it off when I asked her about it, but she had a strange look on her face. Yeah, you might have something there. At least there's one person who might have known her. Let's look him up and ask him a few questions. Oh, no, no. I, on second thought, I don't think we'd better. If he did kill her and we ask questions, he might leave town. Let's just keep an eye on him till the lab has a chance to go over that vial. Right. Here's a drugstore. We can look up his address. Luckily, we found that the fair city of Chapel Hill had only one photographer. The little man who had snapped our picture that morning. His name was William Avery, and we jotted down his address. Ten minutes later, we were waiting outside his studio. Can you see him through that window, Rick? Yeah, yeah he's putting on his hat. Move back into that doorway. He's coming out. Come on. Let him get farther ahead. That's good. Let's go. He's stopping. Yeah. Hey, there he goes into that restaurant. Come on, let's go across the street. Still think we ought to question him? No, 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 wait. If he thinks no one suspects him, he may let his guard down. Let's just wait here. We can watch him through the window. The waitress is taking his order. Good. Well, I'm going to take a chance. If he's ordering dinner, he'll be in there for a little while. I'm going back to your studio and look around. Hey, now, Rick, you can't just break in there. We have no jurisdiction down here. And someone had no jurisdiction to kill Isabel Croner. I'm sorry, Walt. There might be something in that studio to pin this on Avery. Okay, you win. But I'll go back and look around. I was breaking in houses while you were still breaking in rattles. Okay, Grandpa. Don't let anyone near your bones creak. <laughs> Find anything in his studio, Walt? And how? Our friend Avery has a broken camera. It's been smashed. Wow. Oh, huh. Hey. Hey, hold it. Here he comes out of the restaurant. Oh, looks like he's heading for his studio. You, uh, you say his camera was smashed? Yeah, found it in the closet. Didn't the coroner say Isabel had been killed with a heavy instrument? That's right. You know, Walt, this may fit. After Avery took the picture, you recognize Isabel. Then still with his camera, you went to see her. They fought and he bashed her with it. How will buy that. I mean, maybe we're just grabbing at straws. We still need something concrete to tie Avery in with that murder. I... Hey, wait a minute. Huh? Look up ahead there. He's got an apple. Look at the way he's eating it. Well, what about it? Well, he's only biting it on the right side of his mouth. So what? I have a hunch, that's all. Well, if it's about that apple, forget it. He just threw it away. Yeah? Well, what's all this about, anyway? Let him go on, Walt. We'll know where to find him. And besides, I want this apple. Holy cow, what are you doing in the gutter? If you're that hungry, I'll buy you a whole apple. No, thanks. Come here, Walt. Look at this apple. Hmm? The teeth marks show it's only been chewed on one side of the mouth. Now, maybe that's just habit. I don't know. Or maybe Avery has bad teeth. So no matter what it is, how does it help us? I think it may help a lot. Let's get back to the sheriff. Well, it's about time you fellas got here. I thought you were coming over right after dinner. I was sorry, Sheriff, but we followed a hunch. You know a photographer here in town named Avery? Bill Avery? Why, sure. He's the best photographer in town. Came down about a year ago. Why? We think he killed Isabel Croner. But, well, now, what makes you think a thing like that? Well, so far it's nothing concrete, but Isabel seemed to recognize him today. Yeah, so we followed him. And later I found a broken camera in his studio. We think it's the death weapon. Well, well, now, a broken camera is hardly enough to convict a man. Oh, we know that, Sheriff, but there is something else. You remember that vial of silver nitrate we found by Isabel's body? Uh, sure. What about it? Well, some dentists prescribe silver nitrate for use on the gums in case of infected teeth. Now, look at this apple Avery was chewing. The teeth marks show it's been eaten only with the right half of the jaw. So? So that could indicate Avery has had bad teeth and 
may have been using silver nitrate on his gums. Now, that's downright clever. Of course, it still don't prove nothing. Well, it might, though. Send this apple on to the lab. If they find traces of silver nitrate on it, it will at least indicate Avery was in Isabel's room. Yeah, and I've been thinking. It might just be a wild guess, but if the girl recognized Avery, he probably recognized her. He might be a big European criminal. He was afraid she'd turn him in, so he killed her. Now, you may have something there, Walt. A transatlantic call to the Swiss Detective Bureau might clear up his real identity. Now, now, boys, before you go running up my phone bill, let's just take it nice and easy like this broken camera, silver nitrate apple, and motive. It's all mighty interesting. But I don't think we'd better waste time sending this apple to the lab. Doubt if they'd find anything on it. Well, you'll at least check it, won't you? No. Like I say, all these things are real interesting. But there's just one thing stands in the way of me trying to arrest Avery. What are you getting at, Sheriff? Well, while you boys were out playing cops and robbers, I caught the murderer. Y- Why? Wait. Yep, nothing fancy. Just thorough, routine investigation. I sent a man to check the hotel manager. He hadn't seen anyone, but he said the maid was due to clean that room about the time of the murder. We questioned her. She got nervous and broke down. Confessed she killed Crona. But why? Lieutenant, what's the reason for most of the killings in your state every year? What's the motive? Well, robbery's mostly the motive. That's right. And it's the same down here. The maid told us she was going through Crona's purse when Crona came in and caught her. She got frightened, picked up a vacuum sweeper attachment, and hit her with it. You know how a berserker petty thief can get when they're afraid they'll be caught. Yeah, but the silver nitrate and the apple. Well, the apple's coincidence. The silver nitrate belonged to Crona. She, too, had bad teeth. Well, I'll be... Move over, Walt. That makes two of us. Yes, sir. When I heard all you fellas were having a big convention down here, I said to my deputy, Peter said, we're going to see ourselves some fancy investigating if anything should happen while those fellas are here. Only I'm sure sorry you went to all that trouble for nothing. Rick, don't speak to me. I'm still brooding. Well, at least we got through the speeches. Yeah. Would have been a swell trip if it wasn't for that hunch of yours. Oh, now that's it. Blame it all on me. Apples and silver nitrate. And what about you? Broken camera and that motive. Big European criminal. All right, all right. <laughs> sort of funny, though. That poor little photographer. Yeah. <laughs> we were all set to send him to the chair. <laughs> uh, Walt. Huh? Maybe we shouldn't say anything about this when we get back. I was thinking the same thing. If Otis ever hears about it, we'll be disgraced for life. Yeah. Let's just forget it. And look at the more pleasant things in life. Yeah. Like that little redhead up front? Mm-hmm. I, uh, I was just kind of, uh... Uh-oh. I have a feeling we've been through all this before. You're right. Well, uh... Shall we have a game of cards, Walt? Diamond Private Detective stars Dick Powell in the title role and was written by Blake Edwards with music composed and conducted by Frank Worth. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Richard Diamond Private Detective is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.
That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.